Now, as I was saying, you, you know, to have a, a, a democratic structure within the EU is very vital because it's more the politics of the EU that's affecting the economy. The actual basis of the economy, I mean, the EU is the largest exporter and importer in the world. It's got the largest financial centre in the world. It is a hyperpower in every way other than overtly saying it, you know. It, it's got the world's second largest military after the Chinese. I mean, it, on par, at least on par in technology, technological terms with the United States. And the United States also has a critical weakness. It is a critical strength at the moment, but a critical weakness in the future. In that its educational system is producing people who are competing uh, on the basis of but not only third world type wages. You've got 143 million US citizens in relative or absolute poverty. You've got nearly 60 million claiming food stamps. In the EU, you've also got similar problems, right? You've got 18 million people, uh, mostly in Eastern Europe, claiming food stamps. But over time, those places will be developed. But going back to the United States, almost 100% of their intellectually their intelligentsia their scientists their, their philosophers are and you can even take um christopher hitchens who, who sadly died recently who i'll be doing a video on um you know he was he was a, an english intellectual and journalist and political commentator who went to america and became a citizen the strength of america is that it, it draws people in uh for its constitution you know, the the weakness of the EU is that the constitution is 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 um, not as popularly well known as the US constitution. It is um, supposed to be all encompassing to provide people with their economic, and political, and natural rights. What are the natural rights? Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But as people in the United States, intelligentsia are getting their degrees, they're doing research jobs, and then they're going back home, you know? Most of the, since 1945, um, most of America's um, progress, particularly in, in ballistic missile development um, and other sciences, were based on Werner von Braun, who, of course, was uh, Hitler's producer of, of V2 weapons, and also because of... Uh, uh, German-speaking uh, Jewish people who, who were scientists who went there, like Einstein, to develop um, theoretical ideas. So it's been based on Nordic Celtic engineering from Europe and uh, Jewish theoretical physics, you know, for the most part. Um, and those are the cause of things. Of course, not everybody falls into those ethnicities, but they are influenced by those intellectual traditions and that's what I was talking about with memes with uh, uh, Richard Dawkins in the first uh, part of the episode but of course um, the uh, the the EU itself it needs to make its constitution much more popular in the minds of the people they must under explain um how the euro works, how the European Union works, you know, that the, the European Union's laws are affecting the areas around it legally because they are based on rationality. People in Moscow and even in New York are being affected, if not by the direct knowledge of those laws, but by the inspirational ideas that are coming from Western and European traditions, which those laws are based on. You know, so if you, as I said, um, Europe is based, European, the European Union is based on its tragedy that hundreds of millions of people in the last century, both in Europe and Western Asia, i.e., the Soviet Union, um, were, were killed for political, mur were being murdered for political reasons, okay, where it being National Socialism or Freemasonry or, um, Zionism, Zionist Freemasonry, um, or communism, or Marxism, you know, the, or or other or other ideologies, you know, like ultra conservatism. Those people, hundreds of millions of people were murdered. So, 
there is a basis that you know you should not as stoic philosophy says you should never base any rational uh, procedure or, or or argument based on fear but most arguments are based on fear and the eu is no exception but at least there is the tragedy but there is also the hope the hope that europeans can create as paul roma said um chart cities throughout the world can create infrastructure throughout the world can expand western civilization and use european cities and western cities to be factories to, as the romans did to create westernized citizens and of course there is a racial element to that to expand the nordic celtic and roman peoples um uh, prosperity and the, the, the amount of children they have you know some racial elements of of immigration will be pushed to the side in that process but it will not be in such a way through some kind of violent struggle it will be done on an economic method you know when you see people like nwo uh, new world order and let me be quite precise on that people have accused the european union of being part of the new world order it says it in the name the new world it represents the americas you know because freemasonries and uh, Freemasonry and Zionist Freemasonry, particularly, also funded a lot of immigration during the twentieth century to the uh, and nineteenth century to the United States from the, from from their own group, own groups, and own populations. You know, um, but uh, the the. the at what Niall Ferguson called the British World Order, which was, of course, the British Empire, spawned the European Union. So those um, uh, people, those Eurosceptics in David Cameron's um, party, are at odds with history. They're at odds with the trends of history. As Ken Clark said, it was the was British ministers who wrote the... Um, the bones of what would become the German constitution. Of course, the European constitution is based on German Scandinavian laws, which derive from English law. You know, the English language will be the most popular second language within the European Union. And in some parts of Denmark and Holland, English is preferred to the native language. You know, that might be that might cause some tensions. You know, you know, some many people in Germany I've I've met speak perfect English, you know. Um, in in some ways, it is going back to the, the the migration age that the English went to from Germany in the neck of Denmark to Britain. And of course, um, to the classical ideas that came from Stoic and Epicurean philosophy from the Roman world, you know, which have inspired both the US Constitution through Tom Paine and Thomas Jefferson, which of course then, after that, was articulated well by Noel Ferguson, and of course the European ideas, which were um, expanded through uh, from Lucretius and Epicure, Epictetus and, and Marcus Aurelius. So those are the sources of those different ideas. So it went on to Lutheranism and and uh, Kant and others. Uh, other philosophers as well, you know, even Nietzsche as well, you know, when he, with his his uh, proposal of empathy, you know, which is not sympathy, but is understanding, you know, um, many different ideas, and these all thread together to, in social democracy and, and uh, pan-European nationalism of today in the European Union. Um, the what. The processes and methods, that's that's what's critical. And what we need is direct is some kind of political leadership within the EU. But as it goes from an inter, uh, intergovernmental thing between the Sarkozy and Merkel and everything else, Britain can't be on the sidelines. It has to be a part. Britain's empire and England's empire created the European Union after 1945 by the, through the Attlee government, you know, it did a lot to curtail Freemasonry in, it, or almost eradicate it in the continent, and mostly in Britain as well, you know. And that is curtailing terrorism and organised crime. That's what it is.